With more than 6,000 wolf attacks last year alone, Russian farmers not only witnessed huge losses of livestock but also faced threats to the safety and stability of farming life. Karma Are you curious about new measures against wolves attacking their farms? Let's discover how these brave farmers cope with difficult challenges in the following video. Every year cows in Russia are at risk of harm due to strong attacks from wild wolves. Herds of cows often roam freely in large fields where supervision is not strictly controlled. This creates conditions for wild dogs to conduct surprising hunts. A wolf's running speed can increase to about 40 to 45 beats per hour, and a cow's running speed can only be about 20 to 20 to say 5 beats per hour. This difference allows us to easily approach and chase the herd quickly. A wolf can venture after many cows at once, taking advantage of the speed and chaos in the herd to attack and hunt successfully. When they focus on a target, their strong hunting instincts are activated, turning them into extremely brutal hunters. In 2022, according to the Russian Ministry of Agriculture, losses due to their attacks are estimated to reach 13.5 million USD for the cattle industry. Not stopping there, the wolf's attack on the sheep herd caused serious damage to the farmers. Some reports say sheep make up about 60 to 70 percent of the livestock attacked by wolves. Do you know why this number is so large? Because they often enter the farm at night, when darkness covers and the sheep are resting. They try to approach the flock of sheep and they attack by taking advantage of the weakest point, the neck, to defeat them. The sudden attack frightened the sheep. Every wolf attack is a scary story for farmers and sheep alike. After just one night, the Russian farmer's flock of sheep was defeated by wolves. They didn't attack one sheep, they attacked the whole farm, causing the sheep to stop breathing. Before this scene, I felt sad for the breeder. What are your children's thoughts and feelings? Please comment number one if you support the response against invasive wolves. Don't miss the following video which will be about Russian farmers' measures to argue against invasive wolves. Today I will follow Jeff and set a wolf trap. He has a lot of experience working coyote hunting. He told me that he had found some dog tracks appearing along the riverbank. I've set some traps here this year to hunt some grassy meadows. First, dig a hole in the ground right here. The hole is about the size of a foot clip. After that, a little anchor will be placed in the newly dug ground. Proceed to place the ground anchor with a chain into the shock absorber on another double match. The trap setting base has a rotation at the bottom of the trap. For the hunt to be successful, preparing bait to attract wolves is important. People will pour a mount of bran made from fallen corn to attract the wolf's attention so they can come closer to the trap area. Cover the trap with bait. Finally, spread a piece of cheese on top to further attract the attention of the invasive wolf. He told me to spread a layer of leaves on top, because if not covered, wolves are very smart and can detect it. Comment number two if you think this method is safe for Russian people to use. If you are new to wolf hunting and feel that setting traps is difficult, I will show you a great way. That is using a mini earth drill, this tool will reduce installation time without wasting your effort. If you find this solution useful, please press the like button to let me know that you are still following. Coming to the second coping method, in the vast wilderness of Siberia, Russia, 
hunting wolves with hunting equipment is an interesting experience. Every time a hunter goes hunting, he must pay attention to many factors to ensure his safety. First of all, they need to check and ensure that their hunting equipment works well and is strong enough to deal with wild wolves. Careful preparation before leaving the starting point is important, including ensuring there are enough stocks of medicine and other necessary equipment. When entering the hunting area, the hunter must always remain on high alert, because wolves can appear at any time and from any direction. They also need to always remember safety rules when using hunting tools and identifying targets before taking them down. Wolf hunting in areas far from residential areas often takes place in harsh conditions, with cold weather and rough terrain. Preparation of clothing and personal items is indispensable, including waterproof jackets, warm shoes and insulated gloves. When you prepare all the necessary equipment, your hunting journey is half successful. Another thing is that not everyone living in Russia can participate in this adventurous hunt. Farmers who hunt must be licensed by the local government. There are two types of licenses, short-term and long-term permits. Long-term licenses are valid for five years and allow you to hunt more animals in more areas. To prevent wolves from encroaching and attacking farms, steel fences combined with electric current are the most popular and effective option. The height of the fence is usually between 4.92 and 6.56 feet, high enough to prevent wolves from jumping over. Steel bars are welded or tightly woven together, creating a structure that is sturdy and difficult to overcome. To further reinforce anti-intrusion properties, wire mesh can be used to cover fences, preventing wolves from burrowing or crawling through small gaps. This creates a barrier keeping them from reaching key areas on the farm. The highlight of this type of fence is the use of electric current. This current is not dangerous to humans or other animals but will create an uncomfortable effect on wolves. When they come into contact with an electric current, they will feel uncomfortable and stay away from the protected area. What do you think about this method? Please leave comment number one to let us know you like this way of dealing with it. Installing fences in areas separating forests and residential areas is receiving support from a large number of farmers for a number of reasons. First, fences can help prevent dogs from entering residential areas, minimizing the risk of damage to their farms. Second, Installing a fence can create a clear border, helping to improve safety and peace of mind for the community. Compared to using hunting equipment, fences offer many benefits. First of all, fences are a more effective means of defense that do not pose a risk of accidents to hunters. In addition, the fence operates continuously without direct human intervention, helping to reduce pressure and costs for the community. A report by the Russian Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment said the construction of fences has contributed to reducing the number of cattle attacked by wolves by 50% within five years. How about you? Is your area affected by wolf invasion? If your area is being heavily affected by wolf invasion of farms, please leave comment number zero. If you agree with the Russian people's measures to deal with the wolf invasion, please leave comment number one. Thank you. Thank you for accompanying me until the end of the video. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel to receive notifications of the latest videos. The question here is, why do wild boars 
moved to urban areas. Someone said that about 10 years ago, there was a man walking through the forest. He encountered a wild boar in the way and fit it. This action of his opened the door for wild boars to approach the city. Wild boar feeding in the city is happening a lot. Therefore, the first thing is not to feed wild boars. Feeding wild boars in the city is strictly prohibited so that bad things don't happen. In addition, houses and areas where people live should build fences to prevent wild boars from entering people's houses. This man told us about wild boars appearing around his house. They travel in search of food, causing destruction to the surrounding environment. He immediately bought materials to build a fence around the house. This fence can not only prevent wild boars from entering, it can also prevent many other species from attacking his house. Simply using wood to make them, the price is quite cheap compared to some other types of fences. Besides limiting wild boars intrusions, this wooden fence also carries a series of other benefits. First of all, using wood as the main material helps minimizing the impact on the environment, such as using materials as metal or plastic. It also promotes the regeneration of wood trees, helping to protect forests and meet environmental protection goals. Not only that, the flexibility of wooden fences also allows for easy replacement and maintenance when needed. This means saving time and money in maintaining infrastructure. Keeping dogs in the family isn't only a safety measure for your home and security, but also a form of creating a special bond between humans and your pets. Dogs are always loyal companions, always ready to protect and care for their families. Taking your dog for a walk and even not only creates a good opportunity to relax and enjoy natural spaces, but is also especially useful and protecting against wild boar attacks. They have the ability to be alert and detect the presence of wild boars before you, allowing you to take timely preventative measures. Furthermore, they also demonstrate patience and concern for you when wild boars approach your home area. They will bravely face this threat and will not hesitate to chase them away, protecting your space from encroachment by wild creatures. In some areas of the city, many people raise wild boars as pets. They feed them milk and family foods. Moreover, they also let them rest and live in their house, and sometimes this could be a little dangerous for the family. They are species that live in herds. If they are unlucky, they will smell the characteristic scent of pigs in your house and come towards you.
although it may feel very familiar to raise wild boars and treat them like family members. Remember that they are wild and their nature is still in them. In a moment, they can turn into a dangerous threat, especially when they feel hungry or excited by the smell of food. Keeping wild boars indoors isn't only dangerous, but can also disrupt the harmony of their environment and affect their naturalness. Therefore, wild boars should not be raised under any circumstances. If wild boars appear around your area, immediately report them to the police. The police will come and deal with this dangerous threat. Someone told us one day that a very large wild boar appeared in the park and they took over the sand as their wasting area. The surrounding people were very scared and called the police. They came and solved the problem. They chased them away from residential areas, ensuring people's safety. This clearly shows the importance of maintaining cooperation with authorities. The police are always ready to respond to dangerous situations, protecting the community from unforeseen threats. However, warning and creating information about the appearance of wild boars also plays an important role. When we work together, we have the ability to create safer environments for everyone. The encroachment of wild boars into cities is largely due to humans. You need to be very careful when handling household waste. Do not throw trash in such public places as they will attract wild boars, and wild boars will pollute the area immediately. Do not go alone in areas where wild boars often appear. It is very dangerous for you. If there are any measures that I haven't mentioned, please comment them down below in the comment section. to let us know. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. The radioactive wild boar is a strategic result of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in Japan in 2011. This disaster caused a large amount of radiation to escape into the environment affecting the Northern Sea area, the Pacific. In that context, wild boars are the herbivorous wild animals that often forage on the coast, as they have been exposed to radioactive sources in the environment and are being poisoned. The number of wild boars are unknown, but it's estimated that millions of wild animals worldwide are exposed to radiation. They are concentrated mainly in Europe, Asia, and North America, areas with suitable habitats for this animal. In the vast fields, in the dense forests, wild boars are completely free to move and search for food. An especially important thing about wild boars 
is that they are very well adapted to the natural environment and they can be found almost anywhere. However, after the nuclear explosion, concerns about radioactive contamination spread widely among the population. Experts have assessed that wild boars, due to their eating habits, can come into contact with radioactively contaminated areas easily. The raises concerns that they could become a major source of pollution and pose a threat to health of these animals and humans. In some residential areas, the presence of wild boars has created challenging situations. Faced with this situation, local police had to conduct a thorough siege to arrest the wild boars causing trouble in the area. This requires them to equip themselves with professional and complex tools to be able to cope effectively. These tools are not simply to capture wild boars, but also to ensure the safety of the surrounding community. Using reasonable measures not only helps prevent harm to wild boars, but also keeps the capture process humane and does not harm the animal. The process of encircling and capturing wild boars not only took a few hours, but also was the result of the high professionalism and concentration of the local police. They have applied the best techniques and strategies to ensure maximum efficiency in this process. Notably, in some other areas, the police acted delicately and gently, hardly causing harm to wild boars, and at the same time keeping the surrounding community safe. Their sensitivity and flexibility in dealing with this situation help them to solve the problem effectively, not only protecting the community, but also maintaining the natural balance. Building fences isn't just a simple measure to deter wild boars, but is also a spending strategy for local communities. People living near areas where wild boars frequently appear understand the threat they pose to fields and orchards. They do not hesitate to spend a large amount of money to buy materials and build fences, considering it an investment to protect their income and livelihood. The community's determination to build fences isn't only limited to keeping out wild boars, but also creates a significant protective wall against the encroachment of other species. Strongly built fences aren't only an effective security measure, but also carries hope to the communities and can protect their plains from diverse challenges of the natural world. This is not only an individual action, but also solidarity, community spirit, and proactiveness in protecting everyone's living environment. To deal with the problem of radioactive wild boar, Smart farmers have applied special and scientific measures to control and harvest the rapidly growing wild boar population. First of all, they conducted detailed research 
on the behavior and biology of this animal, thereby building extremely effective traps. Traps are placed in forests where wild boars are frequent, and even in areas near farms. This proves the wisdom of farmers as they not only focus on protecting their farms, but also maintaining the ecological balance in the area. Specially made trap cages, discrete mechanisms make catching wild boars effective and safe. In particular, farmers have creatively used bait to make wild boars easily fall into the trap. By placing trap bait inside the cage, when the pig enters and eats the bait, the trap door will close automatically. Not only does this help them effectively catch wild boars overnight, but it also keeps wild boars' populations from being able to rely on traditional behavioral patterns to avoid capture. To facilitate the harvesting process, farmers also use tools to make wild boars faint. When wild boars lose consciousness, they can harvest them easily and safely. In addition to spring traps, there are a number of other types of traps with simple construction and low cost that are also used effectively to deal with wild boars' problems. Another popular option is the persimmon tree trap, which is not only inexpensive, but also effective in attracting and catching wild boars. Rose tree traps have similar uses to spring traps, but a lower cost. User simply needs to choose a large persimmon tree, tie the trap tightly to the tree, set bait, and then cover the trap with the leaves to create concealment. This is not only optimizing the ability to catch pigs, but also reduces the risk of other animals being caught by a mistake. Although the persimmon tree trap seems simple, this is precisely its power. Using such simple means not only saves costs, but also reflects the spirit of creativity and efficiency in environmental management. It is also important to note that any means of dealing with wild boars requires careful environmental and ethical considerations. Ensuring that this facility does not unduly impact the local ecology and not causing unwanted damage is absolutely important. At the same time, the destruction of collected wild boars also needs to be done in a safe, environmentally sound way, avoiding unforeseen consequences. Why is the camel population growing so rapidly? Camels were first imported to Australia in the 1840s for use of free transport and tourism. Camel numbers increased rapidly during this period, with an estimated 100,000 camels by 1900. During this time, camels remained important contributors to the human food chain. A motorized transport replaced camels for transportation. Many camels were released into the wild then. Camel numbers increased rapidly during this time period, 
with an estimated number of 2 million camels by 1950. Camels are herbivores and they can eat a lot of grass. This can lead to land destruction, reducing soil quality and making it difficult for native plants to grow. Camels also compete with native animals, such as livestock, for food and water. This can lead to a decline in a number of native animals. Camels sometimes roam on highways and cause traffic accidents as well. According to a report by the Australian Wild Camel Control Authority, referred to as the DCMA, there are about 100 to 200 traffic accidents caused by camels in Australia each year. These accidents often occur in the central and northern regions of the country, where many wild animals live. About 10 people have not survived traffic accidents caused by camels in Australia since 1980. This can be dangerous for people and animals as well. To control invasive camel populations, Australian farmers use hunting. Camel hunting in Australia is often carried out by using off-road vehicles and hunting equipment. This process not only requires the ingenuity of hunters, but also possesses many safety and ethical challenges. Hunters use all-terrain vehicles to browse the land, looking for camel tracks and signs. When they spot camels, hunters approach them carefully before using hunting tools to catch them. During hunting, ethical management plays an important role in controlling the number of camels hunted is extremely important to avoid damage to the environment and other animals. This helps maintaining natural balance and prevents overhunting. After shooting them down, the hunters collected the camel carcasses and brought them back for processing and use. The camel will be hung on the vehicle's crane. Next, several Australian hunters will work together to separate and harvest the camel's leg parts. This process will be done quickly and carefully to ensure the quality of camel meat. The process is truly cruel for this wild animal sometimes. However, this is a countermeasure licensed by the government in Australia. Harvesting camel meat can also provide for people. Wild camel meat in Australia is quite expensive, three to five more expensive than the cattle. This camel thigh meat will be brought to the transport area to be separated into parts. Then the meat and bones will be harvested separately. On average, each camel leg weighs about 198.42 pounds. It is very heavy compared to other species. Every day, a group of hunters in Australia can shoot down 100 to 20 camels. However, to face the problem of overpopulation, control measures have been implemented. Data from the Australian Wild Camel Control Authority shows that the camel population has dropped to around 1 million by 2023. Camel meat can be prepared in two different regional ditches in Australia. 
in addition to applying hunting measures. Another solution being implemented today is to bring wild camels to livestock farms. Helicopters and all-terrain vehicles play an important role in this process. They are used to gather camels to a certain area, where they will be then transported to the livestock farms. This process not only helps minimizing encroachment from camel populations, but also creates opportunities for them to be managed more effectively. Transport vehicles, including trucks and planes, play an important role in moving camels from the wilderness to farms. Here, they will be cared for. Do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos.
And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.